Welcome to our first real lecture in our course Introduction to Quantum Optics. Today we want to discuss the different models we can use to describe the light-matter interaction and define our goals, what we can expect to describe when we have light field impinging onto an atom. Okay, let's get started. So here's an overview of a typical setup that we'd like to discuss. Very basically we have a light field impinging onto the atom, so we have light coming in. We might have different atoms here in a vapor cell, in a vapor, so this would be an individual atom here, another one, another one in our gas cell. And these atoms will respond to the light field impinging onto them. And we need to characterize the response we get from the atoms. And this response will determine actually how much light comes out. So what happens to the light that comes out of this vapor cell, for example, and what happens to light that is scattered from the atoms into different directions. So these are all the things we would like to discuss. We'd like to look at the transmitted light, the scattered light, we'd like to look at the atomic response to the light field, and all these things are connected and all of them we'd like to describe within our framework. Now, what do we have at our hand? What kind of different models could we make use of? Well, first of all, we could just basically choose a classical model uh, which we're not going to actually discuss in detail in this course, but you might have heard of it before, it's actually very good to build some intuition of what's going on inside an atom. So you have, for example, the positive charge of the core, the electron, and you model this just very simple by just connected by a harmonic oscillator uh, as these uh, positive charge bound to the negative charge here. And now what the uh, electromagnetic field and oscillating electromagnetic field of light would do to these atoms, well, the oscillating electric field would just drive the electron or the proton back and forth and induce a relative motion between the two. And uh, therefore, we would kind of expect these to be driven into oscillation by an oscillating light field. So that's one model we can use. And in that case, we would have the atom based on a classical description. This is a purely classical model. And the electromagnetic wave would also be just a classical electromagnetic wave that you all know from your electrodynamics course. Now, as I said, this is not something we want to discuss here, but this is, would be a simple starting point where we could, could start the light atom discussion. We want to start at a next step where we actually take the atom to be quantized, but the field to be classical. This is what we call a semi-classical description of the atom-light interaction. And we have now the atom described by the internal quantized levels. Let's say this would be two states, for example, in the atom. And now this atom, this quantized atom, this two-level atom will be driven by a classical electromagnetic field. This is what we call a semi-classical description. Atom is quantized, field is classical. And then the next level we're going to discuss will be the case where both the atom and the field will be quantized. So in this situation, we will discover the full potential of the light-matter interaction, everything that's possible between quantized light interacting with our quantized atom. So both the atom is quantized and the light field is quantized, and then we'll kind of first discover the notion of photons. What are these photons actually, and how do they interact with the atom, and what we can, can we expect of quantum mechanical light when it interacts with a quantum mechanical atom. Now, just to get a brief overview of what you can expect, what, what are the phenomena we can describe within the different models. So the classical model, the purely classical model, already allows us to describe, for example, absorption and dispersion. But we can't describe effects like, for example, black body radiation or nonlinear effects in the atom. When we turn to the semi-classical description, actually we can describe all of the above phenomena, uh, but we still can't describe uh, phenomena like photon statistics or non-classical light field that go beyond this description. So this is really where we need the full power of the full quantum mechanical description of the light field being quantum mechanical and the atom being quantum mechanical in our system. Now, to start our discussion of the semi-classical description of how an atom, a quantum mechanical atom, interacts with light, classical light, we have to basically first turn to a simple model that helps us kind of gain some intuition of how this could work. So for example, let me consider a negative charge here, minus Q, positive charge plus Q here, separated by some vector R, giving rise to some dipole moment of this object, of this positive and negatively charged object at some distance R, D equals Q times R. Now, when we expose such a dipole moment, classical dipole moment, to an electric field, that's, which is kind of pointed here, 
we have an interaction energy of this dipole moment with this external electric field. So think a moment for yourself. I'm sure you remember from your electrodynamics course, what is this dipole interaction energy that we're looking for? All right. So let's remind ourselves this dipole interaction energy. That's just the scalar product of the dipole moment times the electric field at the position of the dipole moment. Okay, so this would be the dipole uh, interaction energy. Now, why is this useful? Well, if we just look at an atom uh, itself uh, in the ground state, for example, we have the positively charged core and we have the negatively charged cloud surrounding the atom. Now, in this case, we actually find that the dipole moment is zero because the center of mass of the positive charge and the center of mass of the negative charge overlap and therefore there's no net dipole moment in the atom at present. So there's no dipole interaction energy. However, when we now apply an oscillating electric field, it's going to predominantly drive the electron cloud back and forth. So we basically can have a situation like depicted here where the center of mass of the electron cloud does not coincide anymore with the center of mass of the proton, for example, at the core of our atom, uh, such that now we have a so-called induced dipole moment. This is the induced dipole moment, which can be non-equal to zero when we drive an atom with an oscillating electric field, for example. Okay, so this leads us to the kind of intuition of how we can define the quantum mechanical interaction Hamiltonian of an atom with a with the light field and that's just the dipole operator which tells us the dipole moment that's present in an atom times the electric field at the position of the atom at times t. Okay, So this is our fundamental starting point for the subsequent lectures. This is the interaction Hamiltonian and the dipole operator d uh, that's just q the charge of the electron times the position operator of the electron. Okay, So this would be our dipole operator and this would be our interaction Hamiltonian. All right, and that's everything we need to start our discussion of the light atom interaction. We have the Hamiltonian that governs the light atom interaction to first approximation. That's the most relevant one we're going to make use of. And now we just have to see how the atom responds to such a perturbation of such an interaction Hamiltonian. And this is something we want to do in the next lecture. So see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching.